Uh, thank you very much, Moige, for that interview. Now let's talk food, because food is very critical. The country, as I earlier said, I have Mr. Charles Opio, uh, for, who is the Influencing and Advocacy Manager again Kenya, and uh, Mr. Isaac Mateka, Public Health Director, Machakos County. I start with uh, Mr. Mateka. Uh, looking at um, the impact of COVID-19 in terms of how it disrupted the food value chain, specific to Machakos County, how would you assess, how is it? Um, thank you very much uh, and uh, good evening or good afternoon, I think is the best way to say it. Uh, it was a bit of effect, uh, it was affected a bit of it, uh, basing on the issues of the close downs and the movements uh, to, the, to the markets was a bit low. And uh, looking on at some data we collected from the various uh, vendors inside there, about 58% were affected about the issue of uh, availability of food within the markets areas. Oh, 58%? Yes, yes. That is more than a half. Yeah, they were talking on, uh, especially on the costs of the food, uh, which was getting a bit too high, mm -hmm. and it changed to a, to a way that uh, you'd find that uh, the way it was easily accessible, the, uh, the public health and uh, close downs which took place were a bit affecting the availability of food at that period. Right. But we had to get in and work on it. Yeah, the, yes. uh, and, and Charles, I mean, uh, at GAIN you, you make assessment of this development. Uh, what is happening in Machakos? Was it replicated that, uh, in majority of the counties in the country? Yeah, yeah thank you very much. Uh, as you put it very like, I work for GAIN, Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition. And um, I would say very well that um, part of what we do, or rather largely, is to ensure that we uh, Kenyans can access safe, nutritious, and affordable food. Eh? And uh, of course, uh, with the COVID-19 really having you know, um, come home, definitely you understand the disruptions that it came up uh, with. Uh, that really meant that uh, we really needed to do a bit of an assessment to really get to do a quick and rapid assessment to understand what are the key uh, areas that have been affected and how can we intervene and because as you put it very well that if we have any disruption in terms of supply chain for foods obviously that would have negative impact on, 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 on livelihoods and basically even the health of, of the population so we undertook uh, an assessment in Machakos County, Kiambu County of course the program was in two counties but just as a pile of program and it was very obvious that some of the outcomes were quite really stark in the sense that uh, with the lockdowns, you can understand that the, 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 the consistent flow of food that used to be there, including even those that are imported out of the country, it really that was hugely affected. Mm -hmm. And that meant that the very limited food that was there, it means that really the cost of food going up, uh, looking at even the freshness of food in terms of even issues around food safety became an issue because then now food that you ordinarily would sell for three, two days, that you'd have to sell for a couple more days. Mm -hmm. And that also came about with losses, especially for the business community, especially the vendors that are in the market. So the whole thing really had um, the, 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 the impact of, of COVID really was very real in the sense that you could hear supplies were cut off. Yes. You could hear the food that is being sold is not of the quality that you desire. Um, basically, generally, the general fear of even consumers not willing to go to the market, so really trying to explore okay. alternative ways to order for food, mm -hmm. and that obviously really is the additional cost and all that. All right. So with all this, as you've had, even the figures really demonstrated that the impact was really very significant, yeah. and that's how GAIN came in to really intervene in some areas to so ensure that the food markets are not closed down. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, uh, let's talk interventions, yeah. uh, Mr. Mateka, as, uh, as a county the immediate response, you realize this pandemic is here with us and this is what he's doing in, 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 in our markets and in our food system. What was the immediate response? Uh, well, one of the few issues we had to take place as a Machakos County government in collaboration with the GAIN organization is uh, to ensure that uh, people can gain access to the same food by putting uh, various preventive measures, which are the public health measures which have been, uh, which have been identified by the Minister of Health together with our county government. We partnered and we were able to put uh, hand washing stations uh, within the markets and also pushed further and have uh, situations of them maintaining on the use of masks within the 
the, the, the population which is coming to purchase anything from the market centers. And also, of course, ensured also the supply chain when it is coming, they're also following a good hygiene practices to ensure that uh, the market is clean and safe and also everybody can access the food. Now that's very critical because this pandemic was solely anchored on, on the issue of safety, how you protect yourself and how you keep clean yourself. And um, as part of the interventions, is just mentioned part of it, um, for the farmers, for the direct, directly for the for the players in this ecosystem, uh, the businessmen and women who are running agricultural businesses that supply food, was there an intervention targeted towards them? Mm, not very much in terms of the production side. Well, because as again we try as much as possible to really ensure that uh, there is the supply chain in terms of from farm farm gate all through to the consumer is as, as seamless as possible. Mm. Although you could have some ripple effect because really when there's a demand, it means then that the after there's been a, a lot more of production that happens. So we had uh, to really move in and to work to really engage the county governments. And that's for the first time we were able to engage the public health department, uh, bring in, of course that covers also the nutrition department just to ensure that issues of nutrition is covered, but also looking at trade issues and agriculture. And having brought these three departments together, really we synergize and we've realized that while it would be important to really uh, spur a production of food, which is agriculture based, then of course in terms of trade, we needed to really ensure that the vendors, the wholesalers, the people selling the market, the consumers are safe. And at the same time, they're able to ensure that whatever food they have, they can handle it in a more hygienic way. Mm -hmm. And as much as possible, at least try to, to ensure that uh, uh, well, the prices are not that extreme because obviously if there's demand, there's a bit more of uh, the pool in terms of uh, production uh, side of things. Uh, and as you've said, those are public health issue. Because to be very honest, I think cases of, uh, the very initial cases of COVID-19 in Kiambu, as it were, were from the market. And that was really an hotspot area that we discovered. If something is not really done immediately, then obviously that would mean that we will close down the food markets. Yes. And to be very honest, the vast majority of Kenyans, we get our foods from the open markets or what you call the wet markets, mm -hmm. as opposed to a, 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 a group that would ordinarily would get to, or to order online, get it from the retail shops or stores like the supermarkets and the rest. So we said we have to get in because even as we deal with that, we don't want to also um, and, uh, kind of uh, claw back the gains we have made to address malnutrition. Because what we want to achieve here is nutrition. And therefore, uh, as we ensure there is a seamless supply of food, mm -hmm. uh, it's more nutritious, it's safe, it's affordable, then, then we hope then we can be able to really ensure that our people are more uh, kind of uh, nourished in terms of the nutrients they need and they can be able to address issues around hunger and mm -hmm. the rest. Mm -hmm. And that is definitely what we all do as development partners. So we came in and, and really needed to work with all the stakeholders mm -hmm. to really look towards one direction uh -huh. to ensure that this with the so concerted effort, mm -hmm. then we can be able to avert any the cases of deaths or the burden of the disease that will come because of a market which is sometimes congested. So how we manage that really needed a lot of uh, collaboration okay. uh, between the different government departments. Uh -huh. And that was what we did as gain. And that was very effective because if you look at the subsequent results, really you could feel that we really managed to do so much. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, uh, Mr. Matek, now we are in the year 2022. Yeah. Um, first of all, the, the issue of drought in some parts of the country, quite concerning. Um, of course, an election year, that's another dynamic. And I don't know whether elections impact food supply in the counties, uh, but just looking at the outlook of the year 2022 in terms of ensuring that people are getting safe, available and nutritious food in Machakos County to be specific. Uh, are there any plans that you've made that will span over the years just to ensure that this particular goal is achieved, uh, of course, with, with partnership or also independently as a county? Uh, thank you. Uh, when you look at one of the few issues you talk about here, you're talking about safe food and also at the same time availability of this food, mm -hmm. which as a county government, uh, we have sat down within the various departments to ensure we sit down and look at the availability of that food. That is the agricultural sector talking to the farmers to ensure there's good progress, to ensure there's adequate food which is going to take into place, which is well uh, cultivated in the right way and also availed 
to the, to the market for us to make it sure it is safe. That, those are the various measures and we are sure in the year 2022 as a country we, which uh, we are really moved very fast on ensuring our availability of water sources mm -hmm. are good and also looking at uh, one time we, we are having adequate supply of food within the county. It is uh, one of the best things which we are doing. We are sure it will be available. Definitely. Definitely it will be there. Yeah, that's, that's very important. Um, and, and Charles, as, as we close up, there is the element of you've done this in two counties, Machakos and uh, Kiambu. Uh, is there a, a potential? Maybe this this particular year is there a projection of of moving into into more counties? And I understand these counties have different dynamics. So how how do you cater cater to those different dynamics? Turkana maybe is not the same as as Kiambu. How do you how do you plan? What's the plan for the 2022? Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Um, our programs generally are informed by, as you say, county-specific differentials in terms of how they're doing uh, alongside, you know, the malnutrition status of their population. Okay. And that has already actually been put together by the Ministry of Health very well. You'd see every time surveys are done, it will tell you that we're doing so much in terms of stunting rates, the wasting among children, and name among women and girls, looking at aspects in terms of underweight and generally micro, I mean micronutrient uh, deficiency and all that. Mm -hmm. That is what is really informing a lot of our interventions. You find that we move into a county where we feel there is need more, a, a lot of need. And uh, as you have said, uh, we understand the reason why we are very much keen within Machakos, uh, Kiambu, and perhaps Nairobi is because a lot there's the, the challenge around urbanization is with us. And you understand really a lot of even food that we consume really comes out of, of outside these counties. Or uh, rather even if it's there's production like a place like Kiambu and part of Machakos, you notice sometimes there is a deficit in terms of trying to match the population needs in terms of food and nutrition needs vis-a-vis -vis the levels of production. So uh, we try as much as possible to really use uh, some of this data to inform how we work. Uh, and to be very honest, this was only an intervention that was targeting the two counties, but we have other programs that we implement in other counties okay. uh, that really informs uh, really addressing some of the, the challenges that we face. One of them I want to mention is about what we call the fortification program, because really honestly, one of the biggest challenges we have as a country is a micronutrient deficiency. So a lot of people eat food, but they do not get the nutrients that they need, mm -hmm. largely because the way food is handled, not processed or processed well. So sometimes we encourage that uh, uh, our processors or rather food uh, uh, industry players to really enrich our foods with, with the vitamins and minerals okay. and that is within the standards that okay. have been set by KEBS. Okay. So some of these interventions we implement in counties like Mombasa, Nakuru, Nairobi and a lot of the counties where we feel there's a lot of need. Yes. So we are hoping that even in the coming year we are going to get to more counties okay. of course with the different interventions but based on the nutrition status of their population Definitely. which is already well researched right. and that is something that informs how we work. Oh, I love that. Basically, yeah. Wow. I, I, I'm glad there is collaboration yes. to make sure that, um, you know, the lives of Kenyans are, are, are handled properly and our livelihoods, you know, it starts with when you sit down and eat, you get strength. Are we addressing the plate level situation mm -hmm. and some of these collaborations are ensuring that that happens and hopefully we see that across across the country. I know you've mentioned it's very county specific mm -hmm. uh, with other interventions in different counties. But gentlemen, thank you very much for your input. Uh, Mr. Charles Opio, mm -hmm. uh, the Influencing and Advocacy Manager at Gain Kenya, and uh, Isaac Mateka, the Public Health Director, Machakos County. Thank you for your input. With that said, that's all we had for you for business today. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Noki Pimbo. Enjoy the rest of your view.